Darks here, back for another 2DX player interview. Um, this one is one which not, has not been so requested, but I think a lot of people have been looking forward to. Today I have with me a player who, back in the old eras, such as 9th, 10th, 8th, 9th, 10th, that era, really, really stood out. And by really stood out, I mean no player of the time on the rankings really compared to him. He was the only person during 10th style to AAA the King course, which was the hardest course in the game. He was also the only person for a long time who could AAA secure another. So, everybody say hi to DJ Seastar Flair, or as he was commonly known, Seastar. Say hi, DJ Seastar. Hello, everybody. Yeah, so very excited for this one. Um, I guess we'll start off with the basics. So give you, give a brief introduction about yourself. If people don't know who you are, because there are, are a lot of new players in the community. Um, yeah, please tell us basically uh, yeah, like who you are, where you were originally from, uh, those sorts of things, and where you are now. Okay. Well, I, uh, I am from, born, and still living in... Uh, North Dakota in the United States, uh -huh. um, and uh, for those of you who aren't uh, who aren't maybe local to the area, there's never been uh, never really been a big Bimani or 2DX specifically. There's never been much of a uh, a scene here. Mm. But when when the U.S. release of Dance Dance Revolution for the PlayStation came out. I, I picked it up. I had heard, you know, all the import people talking about the game for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I kind of got hooked on that. Yep. Um, through that, got uh, got got in with the DDR freak crowd. Oh yeah. And uh, it was through them that I heard about, you know, everything else that Konami did. Oh, yeah. Beatmania, mm -hmm. pop and music. All right. So, when, when was the first time that you played Beat Mania? I'm curious. Hmm. Well, when I when I got got my PS2 and and the game, I I bought Fifth Style. Oh wow! It, it was it was right right around the time that Sixth Sixth came out. Uh huh. Yeah. I got Fifth because I it was either. Sixth was like a week away, and it was more expensive. Yeah, and I, I felt I couldn't wait. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so you bought you bought fifth style. Um, did you have a lot of experience with DDR before you started playing? Um, I must have had a few a few years. Uh, okay. I was young enough that, you know, I I became aware of Beat Mania and wanted to play it, but I was young enough that I didn't. Uh, have the money to, to run out and import right away. Yeah, yeah. I think so, a lot of people were in that boat back then. So I was quote unquote stuck. You know, <laughs> okay. Um, I was never a I, I was never any good at DDR, but hmm. uh, it was it was a fun way to spend my time and oh yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know how good it really is at keeping you fit, but it was certainly physical activity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think everyone used the same excuse to keep playing it. So, uh, yeah. All right. Well, um, okay. So what year would you say was like the first time that you picked up Beat Mania? I'm, I'm just wondering. Was this early 2000s? Um, let me think. It would probably be 2004, 2005. Okay. Wow. So... Actually, I, I that's, think I was still in high school. That's, that's very close to the same time that I picked the game up for the first time, actually. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of surprising. So you... Wow. So you picked it up 2004-ish, yeah? So from 5th Style. Um, I remember a lot of people reporting that um, you seriously came out of nowhere. And uh, you, know, you started off just picking up the game and within two weeks you were already starting to tackle rather difficult charts. Well, I think, uh, you know, the reason I came out of nowhere is because I <laughs> had come out of North Dakota. Ah, I see. <laughs> was, I mean, the scene was 
almost entirely coastal people mm. or people who had somehow had had arcade cabinets near them. I see. Um, okay. But I, I think I think I got into the seven star range uh, within a couple of weeks. That's very very impressive. Um, I do remember yeah, someone saying you cleared uh, B for you within two weeks. Yeah. What's that? You cleared B for you within two weeks. Well, I'm not sure about it. it couldn't have been B for you because, like I said, I started with fifth style, which didn't ah. have home version. Didn't have B for you. Oh, okay. I see. But I mean, you know, it, it was a home version, and it was. I wasn't in school at the time, mm -hmm. so what else did I have to do? <laughs> exactly. All right. So, um, tell me about the community around this time when you first sort of engaged with, say, the VJ Army community. Well, I, I can't remember when VJ Army came about. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, what I'm was sorry. your what was your first experiences with the community? <laughs> sorry, repeat the question. Oh, just well, I I just wanted to focus on more like community aspects. Like, oh, sorry, I just jiggled my laptop. Uh, tell me about like uh, just just like with your first encounters with the community because I mean, obviously, you just started. Um, a lot of people start without even knowing there is a community. So, how how did you find the community, and what did you think of the community at the time when you first started? Well, the community I knew was the the community that was in the uh, kind of other music games section of DDR Freak. Oh, I see. Okay. I, I can't remember if Bimani style was a thing back then. Hmm. Uh, but it was it, it was all DDR Freak, basically. Oh, okay. So you started just posting on DDR Freak. Um. So when when did you start sort of getting into VJ Army? Was this around sixth style or? Well, again, I'm not sure when VJ Army came about. I want to say I was, I jumped on that fairly quickly mm. after, after it came out. Yeah. Um, you know, Remy, the, the admin, was a mod on DDR Freak. Oh, I see. So it, um, you know, certainly once it launched, people were talking about it on DDR Freak, and mm. I think it was a, a, great, a great tool. Yeah, no, absolutely. For the time, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, it's still a fantastic thing, hmm. right? Yeah, no, I'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> uh, so, we'll, we'll keep going on about it. Um, when did you start sort of making a name for yourself on the, on the forums? I mean, when I started, you were already on the top of everything. So, I'm just wondering, when, when did you start progressing past sort of... From, from being sort of average to starting to sort of stand out as a player well I, I guess I can't really answer that I'm not first of all I, I don't have a, a very clear recollection of how you know specific milestones or anything oh okay um, yeah um, and I guess I don't know at what point I became a standout player in other people's eyes but I mean, when when were when did you start seeing yourself hitting number one on the leaderboards? Um, because I remember even on say six. It comes to BJ Army, I think. Hmm. Um, I don't think it was too long after I started on BJ Army, hmm. but then, you know, the user base was pretty new, and uh, even the some of the other top players in the country like Ryan and Ferrari mm. weren't as active as I was. Yeah, yeah. And even still, your scores really did stand out. I mean, it, it was it was a large gap at that time between any anyone and you. I mean, there were a lot of songs which had only double A's and you had literally the only triple A on it. Well, it so. was an obsession for a while. It was a little bit of an obsession. Trying to triple A everything? <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't say I necessarily had that goal, but mm. just, you know, every time I saw something within reach, I kept, you know, I focused on getting that. Oh, I see. Then okay. I would kind of notice that the next step was in reach. Hmm. I see. Kind of, 
kind of progress. Kind of progress. Okay. Well, um, well, so we'll keep going. So obviously, six style, you you kept playing. Seven style, same sort of thing. Um, I remember the first time that you really stood out for me was when you um, when you posted a video of Rainbow Fly or another, because I'd seen. <laughs> I'd seen a few Tatsujins, uh, obviously of players who were reasonably good, but your Tatsujin was miles better than anyone else I'd ever seen. I'd, I'd never seen a full combo on anything on video, so I, I was absolutely awestruck. I'm just curious, did you make videos very often back in the past? Well, it's, it's something that, um, I guess, as, as I became aware that people would like to see them, I had been wanting to do them for a while. I don't think I had the capability until until around 8th style. Mm. Um, I guess I, I tried not to do too many. You know, I tried to hit, uh, hit things I thought were more important. Mm. Mm. You know, I, and you definitely nails it. I can't even remember everything I did. Maybe I... <laughs> I'm just curious, do you still have your videos archived or have they just disappeared into the wind? I think everything that I still have is on YouTube. On YouTube? Oh, okay, because I, I actually quickly browse your YouTube videos and I'm actually playing some YouTube videos if you haven't seen already uh, in the background. The sort of the old school videos and there's been a lot of comments just on like how, how old school they are with like the towel mod and things like that. So yeah, no, but it, it is very good to see. Um, I, cause I mean, the the big thing which stood out was yeah, actually seeing you play. I just thought I I can't believe that someone is this good at the game and they can do things like this consistently. It just sort of it made me awestruck. So um, I right, I'll keep moving with community now. Obviously, when when did you sort of start to decline with the game? When did you stop playing? Because so far, every time I've interviewed a player, uh, most of them are still active. Whereas you're the first player I've interviewed who's actually quit the game. So I'm wondering, when when did you start uh, to quit? Like, when did you decide, you know, I'm going to stop playing as seriously as I've been? Well, with, uh, with, Red, with Red, I had, I had, I had put a lot of effort into actually um, trying to do decently on, on the Japanese internet ranking, mm. the official. Yeah. You know, that... That was a little bit different than how I'd usually been playing. I'd been mm -hmm. when I played for VJ Army, I focused on getting good scores on elevens and twelves. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of where I had the most fun, I think. Yeah. Is for difficult things. Mm hmm. Yep. For the time. But, yes. Yeah. Uh, but then I spent a lot of time running up against uh, seven key expert courses. Mm. Um, and I, I, I feel I did okay in the end. You know, I, I was in the top twenty, I think, once the. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Afterwards, I, I felt a little bit burned out. Mm. Yeah. Even even when Happy Sky came out, I didn't, I didn't feel like I was as into it anymore. Hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, I can understand that burnt out feeling. I sort of got the same experience during, uh, during Happy Sky as well. I just, I didn't enjoy Happy Sky nearly as much as I'd enjoyed the previous styles. So I can relate with you entirely there. Um, so when did you, so that's when you started to see a decline. Did you still play through the styles, the CS styles as they came out? Or did you just sort of stop altogether? Well, I, I, I put a decent amount of time into Happy Sky. Um, yeah, I think I think when I really kind of stopped was with uh, Distorted. Mm. Um, partly because I kind of saw saw the charts becoming a little bit more difficult. Mm. Which at at one point I would have thought that was fantastic. Yeah. But at that point I kind of saw it as I don't think I'm willing to put in the effort to. Uh, you know, to keep up with these uh, these kinds of challenges. Hmm. It's interesting that you say that because uh, you are absolutely right. I mean, Distorted really did push the game to a new high in terms of uh, difficulty. 
charts just started getting much harder around that period, I feel. I mean, if you right. if you compare Nageki to something like A Another, it's just... <laughs> you can't compare the two. I don't think I ever cleared Nageki. Wow, really? No. I, You know, I, I got it, and I flatlined it a few times, and I kind of felt like... You know, I... I'm not having fun trying to do this. Yeah, the Geki is yeah. just its own beast, honestly. I mean, it is a very, very tough chart. Even today, it's considered one of the hardest songs, so... And it was a little bit surprising, because watching it on videos, mm. you know, obviously, it was a very high-level chart, mm. but I, I didn't feel, just watching it, that, you know, it would it would destroy me like it did. It's quite fascinating that you mention that, because the same thing happened with me and May. I mean, I looked at May and said, okay, it doesn't look that bad. I mean, I, it, it looks doable. And then when you play it for the first time, it just, it tears you a new one. And, uh, well, I, I didn't have, I didn't have that, um, that experience with May so much. Oh, really? Um, I, I was a little bit disappointed that I couldn't, I couldn't get to the level of double Aing it, mm. but um, but the ending always pulled me up, so I could at least clear it. Yeah, yeah, and it's the way that May is really. I mean, it all does come down to the middle, and even to this day, the middle gives me so much trouble. So, did you ever eventually double A it? No, I didn't. Oh, that's a shame. Um, double Aing it, to, even by today's standards, is absolutely exceptional like there's very few people who do have a double a on it so well, it's yeah. it's a it's a big milestone absolutely and uh i think milk chan who's in the chat now did it a few days ago and yeah just when he did that i just thought wow it's incredible that someone managed to do that um all right so we'll, we'll keep going then i mean now that we've talked about or spoken about you stopping um are you still in contact with people who are playing the game nowadays not, not so much. Um, mm. You know, you, you touched on shmups. Mm. There's, I, I was very excited to, to find that when I was getting into shmups, there was a lot of uh, overlap between the two communities. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, as I said, uh, Gokun, or TJB, and as I'm, you know him. Yep. Mm. And, and I'm still active on, on Sows. Oh, I, did, so, I did hear that. Uh, when I posted it, but you still do post on sales from time to time, which is good to hear. Um, yeah. So you do have a, a relative idea of how the game's progressed since you've stopped? Yeah, I've, um, you know, every time a new one comes out, I, I check out, you know, what does it look like, what does it sound like? Hmm. Um, you know, I always find out what kind of crazy shit are they making them do. <laughs> Yeah, so so you're well aware of how hard the game has become in comparison to say tenth style, and it it's it's really incredible to see how far players have progressed. It's yeah, I I was actually curious. What do you think of like the player base and how much better the player base has become over the years in comparison to when you were playing? Well, I guess I I can't speak about the player base as a whole. Mm. You know I. I go on YouTube and I find, say, <laughs> hmm. a guy. Um, Sorry, you, you, so, you sort of faded out there for a second. I, I don't so much follow the, the player base as a whole. Hmm. I, I expect that the kind of median, uh, median level of skill, is, is rising, hmm. with the challenges that they throw out. Oh yes, it's but actually I do. I, I do follow, you know, what is, you know, what is Dulce doing now, and oh, and yeah. that guy who's comboing everything. Oh, Rag, yeah, he's he's a monster. Even even yeah, the top rankers can't with him. <laughs> and yeah, no. people who hard clear things like Quasar, double another. Yeah, I, I can't believe people can do that either. It's just the the way that people have progressed. It is interesting that you mention progression though, because um. You, you might not realize this, but because there are so many songs in the game now, I mean, there's over a thousand songs, easily. Because of that, um, progression has become much easier in the game. Um, it's a lot more linear than it used to be. Yep, so I can 
So, so I mean, when you look back at when you started and remember how it's like one, two, three, four, five, six plus everything. Yep. That was that was a really really hard time because it's like okay, I I do not know what's hard and I do not know what's easy. Whereas, well, you you kind of you you kind of you kind of learn very quickly. Mm. Um, you know, especially if you're if you're active in any sort of community. Yeah. It becomes known which ones are are potentially trouble. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, absolutely. The, thing that, the other thing that amazes me now is just all the options. The options. Uh, tell me about some of the options which you think are great and some of the options which you're kind of iffy about. <laughs> well, Sudden Plus is great. Oh, yeah. That was know, a... I, I love it as a concept. Mm. I, I never... I never adjusted to it as as well as I could use a towel. That really surprises me, though, because it's completely adjustable. So, well, it's it is, but it's. Um, I was a very visual player, mm. and so just just the fact that what is covering the lane is on the TV instead of in front of the TV mm. threw me off a little bit. I think. That is actually really interesting, because um, I never really had an issue adjusting with Sudden Plus. I mean, I guess because I played AC as well as CS, so I'd already used it in the past, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I just find it fascinating that that, that threw you off, because um, I would have thought... I, I did not expect that. Sorry? <laughs> I did not expect that. <laughs> no, I can finally stop answering why I have this towel on my TV. Yeah, a lot of people did ask that, didn't they? <laughs> my parents get to ask me, why do you keep stealing hand towels from the from the bathroom and <laughs> so I need them? <laughs> but yeah. Um, I am very curious. You seem to have read at very high speeds, though, when you were playing. Um, tell me, so for example, I'm watching number 13 now in your King Course run. Um, what kind of speeds were you using? Can you remember? Well, um, I used high speed 4 for almost almost everything. Wow, and and as I said, I was I was very visual, mm. so the faster things went, uh, the better my scores got. That and really surprises I, me. I, I think I think everyone kind of has the uh, has the experience of having a harder time scoring on slow songs. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and, and I think it's. It's a little bit like that. The more time you have to react, the more mm. time you have. To... Yeah, it, it's interesting that you bring this up, though, because uh, have you heard of the green number setting? Yes, and I I was going to mention the green number mm. because it is. I mean, I would have killed for that. <laughs> yeah, no, well, it came in literally the style that you quit. Gold introduced the green number, so yes. It was kind of a shame that you, you exited the game at that point. Green number is one of the most handy features, and it's one of the things which uh, I talk about and discuss with people a lot. It's a very important number to work on. And most importantly for, for like younger players, I say you've got to try and get your green number lower. You've got to try and get it within a certain range. And um, what fascinates me is, if you're playing number 13 on high speed 4, that's that's... A green number that's far lower than like the the air level that I would recommend for people. So <laughs> and, and re remind me, am I also using a little bit of towel on that? Well, I couldn't I'm see because the the top of the screen is clipped off on the on the okay. videos, so I can't really tell. But um, I think I did use a tiny bit of towel. That is on... incredible. Just the the speed that you read at, <laughs> it it really just blows my mind that you can read at speeds like that. Um. So yeah, I'm actually curious now about your technique, because um, technique is a big thing about the game. Seeing as it's getting harder, it is fundamental, or it's it's essential that you have like good mm. fundamentals in your technique. So um, I'm just wondering what your static playstyle was, watching you. It looks like you play very similar to the way Donovan or Milkchun plays now, but can you just go through keys 1 to 7, what you used to use? Oh, um, well... One, two, three. I would say I used the middle three fingers of my left hand. Yep. Um, and I would bring my thumb in for, for scratching, typically. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, if there's one thing my technique was not good at is making full use of my left thumb. Yeah. Which 
I see I see the best players use their left thumb all the time and and I can see why <laughs> yeah it, it's just, very effective. it really does help um, so what about your right hand right hand I would say uh, key four would be my uh, my pointer finger on my right hand yep uh, key five would depending on what was going on either my pointer finger or my thumb Mm -hmm. um, six would probably be middle finger. Yep. And seven would be uh, ring. Oh, so you did use ring. Uh, it's interesting that you bring that up as well, because a lot of people have had a discussion on ring versus pinky for key seven, and um, you find a lot of people use ring, whereas uh, I debate that pinky is better just for stamina, but uh, it, it really does vary from person to person. So I, you, I wonder if it's I wonder if it's an arcade versus home controller thing mm, because okay. I think I think the home controllers take a little more a um, little more force to push the buttons down. Well, it, it depends on the the controller. I mean, honestly, now nowadays these uh, days everyone has an arcade style. Yeah, and and they're modifiable, so you can have anything from like a modern, like a medium setup to an extremely light setup to a heavy setup. It just depends on people's preferences. So just like the KOC, you can mod it uh, to your own personal preference. Mm. So um, I, I don't think it's so much that. I mean, as, as I said, it, it really comes down to just what people find comfortable because everyone has different hands and different tendencies with their hands and because like as, as i said in a video i made a long time ago uh my hand curls in a different way i have to use pinky to be comfortable hitting seven whereas a lot of people don't need that so mm -hmm. i guess you were just lucky and you didn't have to uh your your, your pinky probably curled with your ring finger when you hit the key which is very lucky I, i'm sure <laughs> which is which doesn't which doesn't happen with me which is why i, I had to transition and um it's very interesting to see that you managed to progress with that technique because um, I've, I've recommended to a lot of people to, to shift out of it. Um, but that being said, there are players such as Milk Chun who are still using the technique and doing extremely well with the game. So your technique mm -hmm. has stood the test of time and it is still just very, very solid, it seems. Um, but yeah, as I said, like techniques have changed. Um, I don't know if you ever thought of this, but there's a technique now. Uh, I don't know if you know 1048 or Toshia. Yes. The player. Yeah, his technique has become the most popular technique in the game now, just because it's probably the most versatile technique. Um, it's what you were doing with thumb on one instead of uh, your ring finger. Mm -hmm. So you basically just turn your whole hand around. And I'm, I'm sure you've seen it before, but that's now the most... The most popular way of playing the game just because you can transition very easily to the scratch doing that mm -hmm. and i saw that start showing up in in videos yeah yeah no a lot of people I, are starting to use it and i i couldn't get my left hand to do that <laughs> it's very a, right -hand dominant yeah no me too uh even though i'm left-handed which is ironic um, all right, so let's let's talk about uh, your home setups here. Now, um, obviously, you played mostly on a JKOC, am I correct? Yes. Was that modded? Yes, I I don't know if I ever. Um, no, there was a, a turntable mod. Okay. Which I, I never had much trouble with my turntable, but the keys would stick really badly if I didn't <laughs> didn't do the cardboard thing. Oh yeah, you have to do cardboard mod. It, it was an absolute must back in the day for the for the JKOC. Um, did you ever try the US KOC? I did. Um, I used it for doubles. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, which controller did you prefer? I I think I always used the the J mm. when I played singles, um, partly because it was always the one set up for the left side. Yeah. Um, I. I Thinking back, I want to say the US one was a little bit lighter. Hmm. Or... It, it, it was constructed slightly differently. Yeah. I, I felt like the, the keys on the US KOC were too heavy. As in, you had to press a lot harder to play on them. Mm -hmm. um, that and the sound that they made wasn't very nice. <laughs> 
I, like, it, it sounded like, as I said to people, like, it just sounded like you're dropping bodies on the floor constantly. So, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't a huge fan of the USKSC. Um, I, I preferred the JKSC, hands down. Um, well, at the time, it was very price, price efficient. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't think people pay over a hundred dollars for AOCs these days. Uh, actually, they do because they're out of production now. So. Oh. <laughs> so people okay. do. Um, it, it's the middle uh, ground option that people can take. Um, obviously, DJ Dow's go two hundred dollars plus, which you know for a lot of young people is unaffordable, but. It's interesting to note that the community has changed in the sense that a lot of people playing are now sort of like late teens or in their 20s, as opposed to back when you started, when a lot of people were just teenagers. Mm. And, um, yeah, people can afford these things now. So as you said, most people have an ASC nowadays as opposed to using a JKOC or a USKOC. And I think, I think the ASCs that are available now are much more attractive than the one than the Konami oh, one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The oh. Konami one was not so great. I, I do know people who like them, but if you compare them to a Dow controller, there is really no comparison. Because the... I never saw I never saw the <laughs> the worth in, in the Jap or the uh, Konami one. Oh you never saw just... one? No, I never I never saw one and I never had any interest. It just didn't it didn't Honest. seem like a big enough step up no, to no. just cost. No, absolutely not. But I mean, as I said, the Dow controllers certainly do, and the Dow controllers are now quite affordable, so a lot of people are going for that instead nowadays. Um, Alright, well, on the topic of doubles, I'm wondering, um, did you play much doubles? Well, once, once I got the second controller, hmm. um, I guess I won't say I played a lot of doubles. Hmm. I was certainly a majority single player. Yeah. But um, you know, I spent I spent a decent amount of time trying to get good at doubles. Hmm. And and part of it was because I had spent a lot of time playing one handed. Oh yeah. So I, I felt like I and, and I think I did progress fairly quickly because of that. Hmm. That's interesting to so, hear. So doubles was doubles was kind of fun because you know it was like oh I'm doing sixes now I'm doing eights and <laughs> very little time in between just because my right hand do. Yeah, I'm just curious. Uh, did you hit a wall with doubles, or did you did you try Dan courses? I did. I did try Dan courses. Hmm. I don't. I I guess I never tried to measure my progress with band courses hmm. so I'm not I don't remember how far I got um, I, I did a couple of 12s on double Wow! <laughs> but the you know my right hand was very good and my left hand was very bad hmm. so, oh, it tends to be the case for most players it, it seems and uh, so it, it basically came down to <laughs> if, if there wasn't a lot of uh, a lot that my left hand was expected to do, I could, I could get through it, and mm. if my left hand had a lot going on, then I, I really couldn't. Yeah, you should see some of the doubles charts that have come out recently, it's just... I, I do I, not... I, I think it used to be more, I guess, right hand friendly. Yeah. It seems like there's a lot going on on the left hand now, which, I mean, mm. is, is probably proper <laughs> but, but yeah. it would have it would have buried me yeah no that's fair enough um now another thing which i'm interested in is did you ever hear about bms back when you were playing I did. you did did you ever try it i uh i actually went through the i went through the trouble to get a uh, an adapter so i could use my my controller on mm -hmm on my PC. Yeah. But never I never got into the uh, the whole you know playing crazy B BMSs or Ah, uh, I see. Cuz that's that's apparently the the next step for uh Right. I I think that's where a lot of players kind of playing Yeah. for the uh, ramp up that happened. 
Yeah, no, it, it is very true. I feel like um, a lot of the more recent charts that have come out are orientated towards BMS players, just because mm -hmm. of the density of them and things like that. Um, it's interesting to note that a lot of the top end players nowadays are saying that the logical step to take once you reach hard 12s is to play BMS consistently to try and just mm -hmm. raise your reading level and your ability to, to hit dense patterns. So that's the only way that you can sort of get up to the AAA range on those hard songs. For example, like Quell. Quell is apparently a perfect mm -hmm. example of something that's just BMS friendly. If you're good at BMS, then you'll be able to AAA Quell. Well, BMS is a lot, um, or it was when I played, mm. was a lot more forgiving. Oh, really? You know, just the timing. Ah, uh, it still is forgiving. Um, apparently the, the, the insane rankings, which is the new ranking system for it, uh, it's, it's on a thing called easy timing, which is apparently almost twice as large as the normal, normal like, great window, so. But so if, you know, if you're, if you're killing yourself trying to improve on Quell in the real game, mm. uh, you know, that's probably a much more stressful exercise than, you know, just grinding it out and kind of enjoying it on BMS. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I could see that. But um, I'm just curious, how well did you do on Quell before you sort of gave up around the store? Did you try it? I did. I... I know I cleared it. Mm. Um, I don't remember a lot about it. I, I remember there were a few parts that were pretty crazy. Mm. But it might have been one of those songs that had enough that wasn't too bad that I could pull a low double A on it. Mm. Yeah, it, it had a very rough ending. Um, it's, it's just got like, I think it's 30 seconds throughout the end. So yeah, it, it all comes down to luck. But I mean, um, what would you consider? I mean, looking at looking back at the songs, what would you consider a song which just it was past your level? Like a song where you just sort of went, okay, I'm I'm able to do X, but I'm not able to do this. Well, we we talked about Nageki. Uh huh. The uh, Rage Against Usual. Oh God. Was one where, you know, I could clear it. Yeah. But. I knew there wasn't, you know, I, I knew I, I felt I was not ever going to get that middle. Yeah. And well, for the middle, been, middle, you so. need just a glorious random. Um, I was exactly the same way. I said the middle's impossible. You can't do it uh, without a good random. And lo and behold, I got the good random. So, <laughs> yeah. It, trust me, if you get the right random on Rage, it's doable. But it's and, just, uh, it was just I think you go beyond uh, Go was kind of it was kind of a less intimidating uh, version of Rage. Yeah, it is. Uh, it was it was very fast, but it was sixteenth notes and not mm. not weird notes. Yeah, but it, exactly. Even it was, I didn't I didn't see a lot of uh, a lot of promise in that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, so, I I I can understand. It, was, it really was kind of the. Uh, the new songs in the home version of Distorted that made me think that the game was moving on <laughs> from yeah. me. Oh, it's a shame that you said that because I mean you were still topping the rankings around around that time, so it's 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 a shame that yeah that sort of happened. Um, now I'm just curious. I I did say that I'd mention to you about the community nowadays. Um, have you have you sort of figured? what happened with CS and things like that? Or have you not heard... Well, I mean, obviously you're on South, so you should be well aware of how things have progressed. Right. I I mean, I I was around when the when the hard drive um, of Happy Sky leaked. Yeah. Which was before was before um, it was really it had leaked, but it hadn't been widely used really mm, mm. it wasn't an easy thing to get working no no not at all <laughs> it was impossible apparently but it's it's amazing what's available to people nowadays yeah and you know every once in a while i think you know it's it's right here in front of me mm. i could at least fool around with it but yeah 
<laughs> um, it is it is kind of a shame that the uh, official home versions have have stopped. Yeah, it it was a big hit, and that's that brings me on to the point of uh, VJ Army. You said it's still a great tool, isn't it? Today, and the answer is sadly no, because no one's playing the home styles anymore. Just because. Well, yeah, now they have. Uh, is it programmed world? Uh, Program Worlds for Arcade, Program Sun is the home version, but yeah, it's just, it is amazingly convenient because you don't have to enter your scores anymore. It's done all automatically online. Well, it's kind of the, the perfect realization of what you care what yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's evolved from sort of the, the idea that VJ Army had and the dream that VJ Army had to just being that you've basically missed this like in the last three years it's what i've considered to be the golden era for 2dx because uh the u.s got emus uh the u.s got online support for their arcade cabinets and on top of that you have online support for home and um they're very comparable and um couple that with a very active community which is now based on facebook where mm -hmm. all of the information is streamlined. It's just, it's it's a really good time to be playing, and it's a really great time to sort of be active in the community again. So, that's that's sort of why I came back. I mean, I stopped for quite a while, and then I came back because of all of this. And uh, yeah, it's just it's been fantastic. It's how I wished things were sort of four or five years ago. So well, I, I never imagined. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I always considered EMUs to be one of those great things that was just never going to be available. Yeah. Mm. And, and now it is. And it's it's not just available, they, they have it up to date with Japan. We have everything that Japan has. Mm -hmm. Which is just unbelievable, you know? Like, just to think that we are... It we is, are. It's a little unbelievable that it has been allowed to... <laughs> To, to get to the point that it's at. Well, I mean, to be fair... It's, it's fantastic that it has, but... I mean, I never would have guessed. Yeah, and I mean, on top of that, you've obviously heard that California has officially immunes as well. Which is just... incredible. <laughs> like, I, I've heard a little bit about that. Well, there's, there's now three round one locations, which is the major arcade chain in Japan, uh, now in California, and all of those locations are fully network supported. So they have, they have brand new cabinets with uh, legit AMUs on them. So, as, as I said, California still remains the hub for 2DX. Uh, you, you cannot beat California in terms of A, the, the density of machines that they have in the area, and B, um, just the, the quality there. Like, the, the machines are all very good, and they're all network supported, so... <sighs> California... All the, all the good stuff. No, they certainly do. Uh, anyway, I if if you are still sort of interested, um, there there is always uh, Tricoro for you to to play. I mean, if you were ever interested in trying the game again or or funneling back into the community, I'm sure a lot of people would love to see you start playing again. I mean, in the chat we have a lot of people you might recognize, like Chaos, VGTA, DJ John. All these people are just very excited to, to even hear from you at the moment. So, I mean, yeah. yeah. I, saw, I saw John John pop in. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's great seeing all these names because I know most of them. <laughs> exactly. And they know you. As I said, you've, you've been a massive influence on this community. And, um, yeah, a lot of people are just really, really excited to hear from you today. Yeah. Uh, on that topic, I've actually covered all of the questions that I normally ask, so um, I'm going to turn it to the chat now. Chat, if you have any questions for, for C Star Flair, please feel free to ask them, and I'll and I'll be sure to address them. Or he can see the chat, so he can address them directly. Um, <laughs> obviously, VGTA being a smartass there. But, um, yeah, I mean, would you be interested in coming back to the game? Well, it's, um, you know... Every every six months or so, I kind of take a look at everything that's out there, and I think well, it would be so so fun to try this again. Yeah. But I, I I always think back to around the point when I made the decision to kind of mm. get rid of all my stuff. 
Ah. Uh. There's, there was kind of, every time I would play, I had it in my head that I should be able to do X. Ah, uh, see, here's the thing. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I had the same problem, the exact same problem as you. Actually, um, I think it was around the time of Happy Sky that I had a great depression with the game just because I had that mentality of I should be able to do X. I should be at X level at all the time. And it really frustrated me because I was always comparing to other players. And um, uh, just just a bit of advice from me, if, if you are planning on coming back, don't, don't go in with the expectation of I should be doing X. Go in with the expectation of everything is new, everything is exciting, I should enjoy all of the new things that are available to me right now and um, just take it as it comes, not as with the expectation of, oh, I should be hitting these scores right now. Because, I mean, you are, what, 80 years out of practice? So... And, and rationally, you know, rationally, I mm. knew that. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't play in nine months, obviously, you're not... Just your fingers don't move. Mm. Um, and last year I was, I was in Vegas, mm. and I did get a chance to play on their machine. Their machine's very and, good as well. And I had a blast. Mm. Just... You know, I think if I had if I had access to that, mm. it, it would be it would be much easier for me to get excited about about the game again. <laughs> well, the thing is, you you can have that experience at home. As I said, the network is available to to everyone, and so long as you have a controller and and a computer which uh, is reasonably modern, and by reasonably I mean like when you quit the game modern, <laughs> um, yeah, like you should be fine. So, yeah, a, a lot of people are very surprised that you were in Vega. Uh, sorry, not in Vega, <laughs> in Vegas, and you didn't mention anything. I, I, uh, I'm seeing that. Okay, uh, here's a question from Donovan. When you played DD, did you ever manage to clear Kaiden? Did you ever rival Charlotte or talk to her? And are you aware of Rhea? Um, I think I did clear Kaiden. Wow. <laughs> Just, um, you know, the... The Dan gauge is oh, it's very, pretty very forgiving. Strict. Yeah. Um. So I, I think I did manage to do that. Shala. Um. You know, once once I realized that she was really getting good. Mm. Um. She was. Kind of starting to outclass me at that point. Yeah. Um. So I guess, I, I never really saw her as a rival just because I didn't uh, to me a rival is someone you try to catch up to yeah and I didn't I never I never thought I would <laughs> she um, um she was very very devoted but she's uh she's also stopped playing now I don't know if you you know but she, yeah but I hear she's I, you know I hear she's still that incredible at the things that she does oh yeah today. In, in speed running she's she's world class so you know, it just kind of goes to show. Um, yeah. And, and uh, I guess I guess I um, am not super aware of Rhea. I, Rhea is DJ KC or DJ Hentai. He used to post yep. on VJ Army. He is now, and, as I said, uh, okay, he he is almost at top ranker level, like Japan top ranker level. Um, he's only got three songs left to AAA in the game. And. Uh, so at a, at a very high level, I'm. I know I'm. Uh, yeah, well, high level's an understatement. I mean, basically, the the level that you were at in comparison to the rest of the community, in in like seventh style days, uh, doesn't even compare to where Rhea is at. He is on a level beyond anything that any of us can ever possibly imagine of attaining. Like he's just un unbelievably and, good. And I, I just I just love love seeing that yeah um, because always in my mind you know i was excited about what i was doing but i i always felt that you know japan is their own thing you know, yeah on their own people. and and i'm certainly not and i didn't expect anyone else to really catch up to that mm. and and i think i think shala did um get up there and i mm. think a few other 
people. But it was just um, a shame because a lot of the people who were very, very good were very low key. For example, Ryan. Ryan, even during Empress, was getting world record tier scores. And he just, he just never spoke about them. And you'd only see, like, the occasional video from him. <laughs> right. And, 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 and I'm... That, that's partly why I'm a little bit a little bit uncomfortable with people getting excited about me because I always knew that there was Ryan out there and there was, mm. you know, all these more low key players who were, were better than me. Well, I mean, yeah. that, that, that is one great thing about the, uh, the server now and the, everything being online is that there's no hiding if you're playing the game. <laughs> mm. If you're playing the game, it's just, it's all public. Like <laughs> your scores are there. People can see them and there's nowhere to hide really I mean if you're good you're good and people can see that uh, a very interesting question here from VGTA he wants to know what were your most favourite charts to play like top three either musically or chart wise well uh, I guess everyone played V ah uh, yeah V's a classic you know, v, v is king uh huh um sync Oh, Sync was a very fun one. It's it's still in the big, game. Uh, yeah. Big fifth style. Uh-huh. Yeah. Probably close close to your heart, I'm guessing, Sync was on the first style that you played. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I love the Sync. Yeah. Um, Sorry? I, I, I want to say A. Ooh, but A is tricky. I don't know. Oh, but but A is. I guess I don't have fond memories of A like <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah. Of the others. Yeah. No, I, I know there's a better answer out there. I just can't think of it right now. Oh, that's okay. Um, I, uh, I would say probably something from Seventh Style. Seventh Style sounds good. Um, yeah, I'd agree with you there. Seventh Style was great. Um. Uh, all right, let's see. Um, another question, which is interesting, from DJ John. Uh, who was your biggest influence to get as good as you did back when you were playing? Well, even before I started, hmm. there were, uh, you know, the, the two Tatsujin players on sixth sixth style. Yeah. Who had been had been releasing videos for a while. Yeah. So Lisu and Aga. Uh huh. Which. I mean, Lisu kept playing for quite a long time. I think, I think there were videos of him in red, mm. and and from Happy Sky as well. Uh, very casual videos, which uh, he got very angry about. <laughs> I, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. If I got stopped playing, or if he did. He did stop playing uh, entirely. Just I think it was around ninth. So, yeah, no, he just he just sort of disappeared after that period. Mm -hmm. um, um, so just me, obviously those two um, you know mm. they were both very good players but they also put out very good videos oh, yeah. you know, they they showed the screen well and they showed their hands well yeah no absolutely he's, 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 <laughs> he's why I consider um, I mean anyone who is releasing videos mm. or it's in the year leading up to it, the first thing was after I started calling it. Um, was know, it? Just letting people know that things were possible. Yeah, was, yeah. It's you. And I mean, you, you were one of those people who pioneered uh, Tatsujins because so many people watched your Tatsujins. Um, I downloaded every single one. I won't lie. Like, every single time you released a video, I got it and watched it. And I just could not believe that you're doing so well. Um, one, people are mentioning nostalgia. One very nostalgic thing I wanted to mention to you was, uh, around when Ninth Style CS came out. And, um, do you remember when, uh, you created an account to call yourself out? About, uh, what was it? Full comboing number 13. And, uh, and what was the other thing you did? Uh, tripling beyond the earth. And you were just saying, that's not possible. You know, no one can do that. And then, well, I, I think what I had... Was it an April Fool's thing? or Yeah, it was an April Fool's thing. I think you just did it to troll, but it was hilarious because right after that, you're like, the only person I've seen do it is this guy from Japan. And 
then there's the, you full comboing number 13 on video. I, I think what I did is I, I posted like a completely mediocre score and then compared it to one of my better ones. And <laughs> I, I, I think I had, I mean, I was going around messaging people trying to get them in on, <laughs> yeah. on calling me out. Oh, that was that was, that was a fun. really that was a really good job though. I mean, honestly, <laughs> very very funny to see. All right, um, one thing which Donovan or Milkchan is telling me to tell you about is: Are you aware of Omnimix? I am. Oh, so you do know it's, about it? It's uh, you know, like everything else going on today. I think it's you know, it, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it is absolutely yeah. incredible, and um, I I will be honest with you, I play Omnimix almost every day, just because it's got everything. Like you couldn't ask for more. Right. I mean, the the big thing, and it, in some ways, it was kind of looking back, it was kind of a neat thing about yeah. the home stocks. Yeah. Just changing around and. Um, yeah, yeah, having to swap but, out to to play songs you want to play. And that meant re-experiencing the old, mm. the old versions. Yeah, if, yeah. If you, if you wanted to play something on third style, that sucked. <laughs> but, well, I mean, um, it's. I think it's great because now it's great. Yeah, now you can play all of those songs with all of the modern options and with the modern interface, which I think is <laughs> fantastic. Like, uh, I've never enjoyed fantasy more in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that song so much. Um, question from the Siggy. If you weren't playing 2DX, 2DX, what other Bimani music simulation games would you play? Well, I did play Papa Music for quite a while. Mm. And, uh, and I, I, I would have to say that if I were to go back to anything, mm. I, I've always felt that Papa Music would be a little more likely than 2DX. I think I would have an easier time playing it casually and not trying to get competitive about it. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> to be I mean, fair, I, I, understand, I understand that there's a competitive aspect and a community to pop and music as well. Mm. But I was never, you know, I, there's no way for me to fall back into a serious mindset because I didn't have a serious mindset to begin with, so to speak. To some extent. I mean, I did... I spent a lot of try time trying to clear Cowboy. Um, <laughs> that song was impossible. <laughs> I, just, I, I, I have not even bothered to look at Cowboy yet, just because it's, it's well beyond my legs. But, um... <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it was one of those things that always seemed very close. Hmm. Just two bars. Yeah, those two bars. Those two godforsaken bars, which you can just never make up. Um... Well, a lot of people are mentioning they, they'd love to see you jump on Omnimix and play it. Um, I mean, yeah. As I said, it, it makes a lot of the older songs much more manageable, especially with floating high speed, uh, which I'm sure you're aware of. Um, just yeah. it, it makes speed changes trivial now. So, yeah, I, I might actually enjoy checking you out now. <laughs> yeah. I uh, that song. Oh yeah, no, a lot of people don't really enjoy it, but um, yeah, I mean, I I would personally love to see you start playing again. As I said, you're you're a big idol. When when I got in contact with VGTA as well, I mean, very very happy to just see all these old school people come back and keep playing. And yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. the community is always there if you if you want advice or things to to help you out. And it's just. I don't know what else to add on to this. It'd just be great to see you come back to the game, that's all. <laughs> well, it is a great community. I mean, I mm. I do stick around it. Yeah. Because, um, you know, partly because there's so many people that I've just kind of been so used to seeing for years and years. Mm. But, you know, even outside of Imani, there's plenty of, of shared interest still. <laughs> Yeah, no, there is. And as as I said previously, it, it is the golden age. The community is growing and growing. Like, every every time I look, it's bigger and bigger. So, I think, you know, it's just, it's going to keep getting better and better from here, honestly. So. Yeah, yeah, as long as they don't, as long as they don't figure out how to, uh, 
lock down their arcade games. <laughs> let's let's it is very bright. Let's uh, let's let's not talk about that here. Anyway, um, on that note, are there any final questions for C Star Flair? As this interview has gone for about an hour, and I, I like to keep them around an hour. Um, so, I mean, is there anything that you'd like to say to the community? There's you have a lot of adoring fans out there. Oh so. well, I I love you all. <laughs> um, I guess uh, I'll I'll pop into the Twitch chat if if that will still be active. You know, it'll be it'll be fun to talk to people again. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, everyone is active on the Facebook group, so I mean, if you ever have any interest or any questions or anything you'd like to say or ask, always feel free to post there because I'm sure. Any, anyone would reply to you. I mean, so long as they know that it's you. Because uh, <laughs> people don't actually know your real name. So we'll just yeah, li live it for the group. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, I guess I would say, um, you know, you mentioned that I'm I'm doing the shmup thing now. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of lot of old Bimani people in there. And it would always be great um, to see more. And uh, yeah, I, I guess I don't have a whole lot, a lot else to say. If there are no more questions, no, I think I think that's it. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it really, it, it's it's been really good to hear from you, and it's been just a great experience to talk with someone who, once again, I have really idolized as a player as well. So thank you. Uh, it's been really great for me. Um, if, if you are watching the interview series, uh, would you be interested in seeing anyone else interviewed? I always ask this at the end. Um, who would be someone who you'd like to see interviewed in the future? Just from the American community or the Asian community or anything like that? Well, I, I, I assume that you've had requests for, like, Ryan. Ooh, Ryan is a tough one to get a hold of, but I would love to interview Ryan. Right, that I would love to see that. Um, mm -hmm. I remember when I started, uh, Ferrari was one of the better players mm. in California. Yeah, once once um, again, great I player. Knew, I didn't really much about him, but it would be interesting to hear um, somebody from those early days. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, well, I'll I'll see what I can do. I can I'll see if I can get in touch with Ryan and organize something. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, it all depends on how available or how willing the person is to talk about the 2DX experiences. Right. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And once again, thank you so much, DJC staff, for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right.